Lester, look out for that guy. Look out for that guy. I, I'm doing all right, man. Just leave me alone. Watch the bump. Lester, you gotta watch this bump. Now what? No, we got another bump, man. Watch, watch, Les, watch. Stop the car. Hit him the face out the wheel, man. Watch that guy. Watch that bump. Turn left. Do that. Do this. Look, man. I got to show the host. I'll tell you what. You park the car. I got to go. Les, wait a minute. Look, I... No, wait a minute. Les, wait a minute. I'm hosting the show, too. Hey, Les. How did he do that? Live. Almost. From Laughs Unlimited, it's an evening of comedy with your hosts, Willie Tyler and Lester. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, and a pleasant good evening to everybody, right? Right. Welcome to uh, Laughs Unlimited, right? Live. Do you know what I mean, man? Yeah. Did you park the car? Right, the car's parked. Don't worry about it. By the way, we got a, like, a, a nice parking lot outside, a lot of security. We got an announcement. Is there somebody here tonight who has license plate number 1684? Nine? Your lights are gone. <laughs> but I noticed you've got a microphone there, right? Yeah, you know, some watching people watching your mouth, man. You know, you really can't tell by watching his mouth. Don't watch his mouth, see? Because sometimes his mouth is not moving. My mouth is not moving. And people are saying, where in the hell is the sound coming from? Now, another thing, you know, with willpower and determination, you're into that, right? Right. Now, I always say this a lot, see? When you got the willpower, you got the determination, you know, you can do it. Now, first of all, I will give you this. I want you to hum what I just did, huh? Hum what I just did. Stick me up, man. Oh. Well, you better wake up, man. <laughs> No, no, no. No, wait, hold it. That's the easy part. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. Now, what are we going to do now? We're going to give you what we just did simultaneously. <laughs> this I got to see. Okay, now, when I point to you, I want you to do the exact same thing that you just did. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. Now, watch me. Okay. <clears throat> I'll nod. Okay, good. Much, ladies and gentlemen, right now we'd like to get our show moving down the road of success this evening, right? Right. Okay. Now we're going to introduce a gentleman who does, I guess he does voices and he does, you know, like basically sound effects. You know, he's got his own cable show, right? Right. Okay. Now, are you ever doing any sound effects and things like that? I got a good one there. Chirp, chirp, yuck, yuck. <laughs> chirp, chirp, yuck, yuck. What's that? It's the early bird catching the worm. <laughs> What's the yuck for? You ever eat a worm, baby? Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. Dave Coulier. Come on, lay it on him. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to be a part of this show. They told me it was going to be a color show, so I dressed appropriately. <laughs> Oh, see, that's for the people now who just saw Willie Tyler and Lester go up. Now, if they went out to get a, a pop or a sandwich or something, they're going to come back into the room now and look at the set and go, Honey, the color just blew out on the set. <laughs> so I'm trying to get back into shape. Everybody's trying to get in shape. Nobody ever lets themselves go and tries to get out of shape. Nobody ever says, You know, I'm going to drink about two cases of beer at McDonald's and about 10 Big Macs and try and balloon up to about 450 this month. <laughs> a friend of mine was telling me, he said, you know, Dave, losing weight is the toughest thing to do. I would think losing height would be a little tougher, don't you? <laughs> uh, all right, jumping jacks with a safe on your head. Ready? Feel those knees buckle? Yeah, all right. 
start becoming a couch potato, you know, you're sitting there laying on the couch, you know, honey, honey, come in here, dump some sour cream on me. <laughs> yeah, you forgot to wrap me in tin foil. Yeah, could you just poke me a few times? I'm starting to heat up here, you know. Watching TV, that's how I grew up though. As a kid, boy, I used to watch television Saturday morning. I used to get up and watch cartoons. Remember that? Remember? No, I got hooked on cartoons when I was a little kid. I used to get up with my pajamas on. I had the kind with the feet in the bottom. How many want to admit they had those? Yeah? It's great. You walk around all morning. Pretty soon your feet are that long. Whoa, flopping out. Hey, look. Hey, yeah, I'm dusting, Mom. Shot a pledge. I'll dust the whole house. Okay. That TV set cranked up at 5.30 in the morning on Saturday because you figure, I'm up, shouldn't everybody get up? Why not? <laughs> used to watch those cartoons, some of my favorites I used to watch. Now, maybe there are some of your favorites. I used to watch uh, Sherman and Peabody in their Wayback Machine. <laughs> Remember this show? Had the goofy music in the beginning, kind of went. <laughs> <laughs> Little statues of famous people would cruise by. <laughs> One would fall and break, that little man with a mustache would sweep up. <laughs> Sherman would come out with those big glasses on and go, Well, where to today, Mr. Peabody? I was like, Well, Sherman, set the way back to scene for 1592. <laughs> now, I realize there might be some older folks sitting here going, Hell, I just don't get it. I don't know. <laughs> We had some great shows. Of course, the Jetsons are back for 42 new episodes coming back out. And uh, yeah, they're, br they're bringing back the original cast, which I thought was a lot, of, uh, <laughs> a lot of sincerity on their part, sure. Including all the people who did their voices. The Jetsons were great. They had all the modern day technology, little family spaceship that they would cruise around and meet George Jetson. A little. Always freak you out if you're walking out of here tonight all of a sudden you guys the Jetsons I am freaking out yeah. had that great dog walking around their house right roars 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 a lot of heroes on those cartoons I always like and now the Winkle's Corner thank you <laughs> <laughs> spider, spider, on the wall. Don't you have any brains at all? Don't you see the walls just been plastered? Don't you see that, you little spider? You know, kind of, we edited that, right? We edited that. Yeah, I had a lot of favorites on those cartoons. I always like. <laughs> I always like Popeye. Seemed like. Every episode of Popeye the Sailor was exactly the same. It was where Popeye and Bluto were fighting over olive oil. And I think we could see why. <laughs> what a bod, huh? Yeah. <laughs> olive oil always gets in some kind of stupid predicament in the beginning of the show. Oh, Popeye, oh dear, oh my. Oh boy, that just your broth go to the watched enough shows, you can understand why this relationship between Popeye and Olive Oil existed in the first place. I mean, every time I'd see her, it was like, well, blow me down, Olive Oil. <laughs> yeah, I'd laugh just like that, too. Oh, cut it out. Come on. Come on. Of course, Popeye and Bluto would start, you know, when they would fight, you'd see that big cloud of dust, right? And then their arms and legs would fly. Popeye's arm would reach out, grab a can of spinach that, of course, just happened to be there, right? <laughs> of course, he chugs that stuff down, knocks Bluto for one big solid punch. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Those guys were always mumbling stuff under their breath. I listened to one show really close. I swore I heard Bluto mumble, oh, the heck with it, Olive. You got no boobs anyhow. <laughs> Of course, Popeye knocks Bluto out, and at that time, Popeye wins his beautiful, vivacious-looking queen. You guessed it, olive oil. Yeah, and what a babe, huh? Check her out. Well, don't even call if I'm out with me, Olive, says Popeye the Sailor Man. Thank you very much.
Oh, right. You know what, man? I, you know, I love going to school and all that kind of stuff. I love seeing the ABCs, and I'd like to see them tonight. No, you don't have to say your ABCs, like I want to see the ABCs, name. You don't have to say those, okay? I'm going to see them immediately. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Three, four, oh, 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 three, two, oh, oh, three, 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 four, oh, four, three. No, actually, I was saying that because, you know, in order to introduce this next young man, see, uh, you got to know the alphabet. Really? Yeah, because he's a DJ. Uh-huh. He's an MC. <laughs> I see. See, you got, it. you got the message, man. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Andy Roberts. All right. Thank you. All right, shut up. We do silly things when we married, don't we, guys? Huh? Like, take, for instance, coming home late. Guys, what do we do every time we come home late? Come home at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning. We all do the same thing. What do we do? Switch the car engine off coming down the street, don't we, guys? Huh? And then what happens? We go straight past the drive because the steering lock's on. <laughs> <laughs> and then you back up. You go in the drive. You don't shut that car door till the morning, do you, guys? Huh? You miss the cat, you miss the milk bottles on the step. Isn't that funny trying to open that front door when you're drunk? Huh? <laughs> you creep up the stairs, you open the bedroom door really quietly, and the bedroom is in complete darkness, but you know it's lying there because you can hear it breathing. <laughs> <laughs> the Incredible Hulk in pantyhose is waiting for you to come home. And then you creep round the side of the bed and you guys, uh, you get undressed in the dark, you slip beneath the sheets, you think you made a home run, when all of a sudden at two o'clock in the morning, it suddenly wakes up and wants an argument. Guys, at this point in time, you have done the worst thing you could possibly do. You have awoken the bionic tongue. <laughs> and if you've got a wife sounds anything like my wife, it will sound something like this. Where the hell you been? Talk to you, talk to you, much. I've met you, I've met you, I've met you, three years ago. You got drunk, the honeymoon you got drunk, I'm going to go to the big old, you wouldn't pay the guy, I don't know, I've met John Mark, I don't want to go to the fish, I don't give a shit. Guys. Don't do this anymore. Do what I do now. Do exactly the opposite, okay? Come home at like six o'clock in the morning, all right? Rev the car engine up when you're coming down the street, all right? Screech into the drive. The car door, guys, three times at least. Do, do, do. The milk bottles, smash them all over the street. Wake the whole neighborhood up, all right? Ch -ch -ch. The cat, best one, up the butt. Meow! Use every single key to open that front door. Stomp up them stairs as if you own the place. Fling open the bedroom door and guys, in your most sexiest and in your most seductive voice, say, darling, prepare yourself. <laughs> for I'm in the mood for love. And you bet your life, guys, she'll be asleep then. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good night. God bless. Thank you. You know, I met the next act, this young lady backstage, you know, she's really nice and courteous. You know, she even talked to me. She says, Lester, would you get out on the way, please? <laughs> and I was very courteous and got her out of the way. But she's very funny. Let's hear it, folks, when this Diane Nichols! Hi! Oh, boy. I recently joined a health spa. I love it, but it's co-ed. That means you have to look good while you're exercising. Is this cold? I'm wearing that little headband that looks so cute on Olivia Newton-John. <laughs> I put this little stretchy thing on my head, discovered something very frightening about my head. It comes to a point. <laughs> I look like a cone head. This thing snaps off, kills the instructor. <laughs> I'm out of there. Of course, I look better than some other women. They're wearing their leotards too small. They think it'll hold them in, make them look thinner. You just spill out over the edges. <laughs> I think it looks real unnatural. <laughs> Like, you're not supposed to have cleavage under your arms. <laughs> this is not attractive. Men don't like this. Of course, if you really want to confuse them, push it around to the back. <laughs> you can be the only gal on a double date. <laughs> Two dinners. Yum, 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 yum. Boy, women have it much easier than men, though, on first dates, don't we? Because they still have to call us up. That means we know they like us. <laughs> they call. <laughs> it's kind of a clue. I mean, nobody ever calls you up and says, I won't be dating you. <laughs> oh, good, I can leave the house now. I think men are more romantic than we give them credit for. Because I think if a man really loves you, he'd do almost anything for you, all right? I think he'd kill for you, I think he'd die for you. Just one little thing a man will never do for you. He will never hold your purse in public. <laughs> but we make them, don't we? That's our version of prove your love. Besides, we can always get men to do what we want. We have the greatest weapon in the world against men. You know what that is. <laughs> no. It's that whiny voice that we all do real well. 
You know the one that melts the wax in their ears? <laughs> God, a man will do anything to get away from that sound. And if you really want to torture a man, you take that voice <laughs> and you speed it up. <laughs> what is that, sonar? What, are you talking to whales? Look, baby, I told you, I do not hold purses. When you think what they ask us to hold. <laughs> I mean, the priorities, yeah? yeah? I'm talking about a little clutch bag here, hon. You know, Helen Gurley Brown, she wrote a uh, book called Sex and the Single Girl. There was a whole chapter in there, things to do to turn men on. She said a woman should put on wet underwear under her clothes, because this will make your dress cling like skin. Yeah? <laughs> Let's think about this. You walk into a party with wetness seeping through your clothes, you think a man's gonna think you're sexy? He's gonna think you sweat like a horse. You won't be allowed on the furniture. You'll be the only one at dinner with a placemat on your chair. Kinky. You ever think about your sexual limits? I have. I made a list. I Xeroxed it. I hand it out. Never make me do this. I don't care how much I've had to drink. I could come right out of a coma and hurt you. I could never have group sex. I'm too insecure. I'd always think there'd be somebody making rabbit ears behind my back. Thank you. What a great audience. Bye-bye. Okay, Les, you ready? I'm ready, man. I like my microphone. That's great. Are you ready to introduce this uh, next young lady? Oh, yeah. She's from San Francisco, man. Yeah, very talented lady. Let's say we get together and welcome her. Destiny. Destiny. Hi, how are you guys doing? Great. 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 My name is Destiny, and yes, my parents are hippies. <laughs> I had a different childhood. Most parents took their children to amusement parks. My parents took me to so many sit-ins, I didn't learn how to walk until I was 10. <laughs> I had a Kool-Aid stand, like most of the kids, right in front of the house, like everyone. My parents kept on spiking it with LSD. <laughs> I made 12,000 that summer. <laughs> My mother used to make a big deal out of everything. Remember when I got my period for the first time, she threw me a surprise party. <laughs> Very embarrassing. Should have seen the invitations. <laughs> I didn't know Hallmark made those cards. <laughs> Kept missing that section. 100 people showed up, it was fun. Kathy Rigby was there, Brenda Vaccaro. <laughs> I'm living with my boyfriend now. He's great. It's nice. It's a nice relationship. He has some odd habits, though, you know. He likes to walk around the house naked. That's really odd. Any of the men out there like to walk around the house naked? Well, it's not just our house. It's any house. <laughs> Very embarrassing on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Don't drop the gravy. That's right, though. Got my very own Macy's credit card. Very excited about that. That was really exciting. It's mine. It has my name on it, but my boyfriend pays for the bills. <laughs> so I can use it. I just can't come home. <laughs> the way he gave it to me was great, too. He said, here, honey, here's your very own Macy's credit card, but don't use it. <laughs> Only in case of an emergency. What kind of emergency is going to come up with a Macy's credit card? <laughs> what am I going to do, go to work and forget my clothes? <laughs> Oh, God, I'm naked. <laughs> Thank God I had that Macy's credit card taped to my ankle. <laughs> I don't understand this. <laughs> my hair's finally growing out. So. <laughs> yes. I do so much to it, you know, I'm constantly cutting it, perming it, dyeing it, cutting it, perming it, dyeing it. Most girls tease their hair. I'm tormenting mine. I had this nightmare last night that I woke up completely bald with a note right by my head saying, Destiny, we just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> Signed your hair. <laughs> wear a lot of hairspray, too. Ladies, do you wear a lot of hairspray? Yeah. I wear so much hairspray, you go into my bathroom, there are flies stuck in midair. <laughs> you people have been great. My name is Destiny. Hey, you know what? 
this next young man is coming up, you know, he, what he does, he writes his own comedic songs, you know, and he's very good at it, you know. Hey, wait a minute, I write my comedic songs too, my own ones, man. I write country songs because they tell it like it is. Really? Oh, yeah, I don't really like country songs because they really tell it like it is. I wrote a good song one time. What was it called? It's called, You Don't Have to Say Good Night, Just Get Out of Here. <laughs> Would you uh, do the honors? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Aguayo. No, please, stop. Thank you. I'd just like to say I'm pleased and honored to be anywhere. Do you guys like the outfit? Folks at home, do not adjust your set. The guy in a pink coat. I'm a typical guy. We'll wear 10, 12 colors at a time. Doesn't matter. Women plan their outfits. Like a woman who got to say, I'm going to go out tonight, I'll wear a red dress, black shoes, black purse, that'll look good. Guys go out, they plan their outfits. They go, I like my green check pants. I like my orange striped shirt. They're both clean. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a little music for you guys. You guys hear the music, right? Yeah. <laughs> my favorite rock and roll band is probably the Rolling Stones. I think they're great. Yeah. yeah. Everyone talks about Mick Jagger. To me, the heart of the Rolling Stones is not Mick Jagger. It's Keith Richards. Yeah, now there's death playing a guitar. <laughs> Stones used to do songs that lasted 20 minutes long. Now they do songs as long as Keith's attention span. <laughs> so we're going to do a little love song here. Uh, can you bring this up in the house a little bit? Thank you. It was a bad day for me. Woke up, found out my girlfriend left me for a country and western band. <laughs> yeah, she calls up and says even though she's going to be living with 19 guys named Rusty, <laughs> we can still be friends. So this is a love song for anyone who's ever been involved with somebody they thought was very special, heard those magic words, hey, let's be friends. You call to say it's over, could we still be friends? That really is quite touching, but I think it all depends. But first I must convey to you the way I feel inside. I didn't want to lose you, I can't let these feelings hide. I'm gonna write your name and number on every path I'm gonna call Roto Rooter, he's a man too. Have him pay a visit at 4 a.m. to you. I'm gonna tell the world just how low you are. Feed some dog a laxative and lock him in your car. vacation to your credit card. I'm going down to the X-rated classified for the show a picture on the fit to be tied. Better than, than, than. Oh, and we can be friends. See, darling, it's not that I reject your friendship, but first I must express my feelings. You know, scientists and doctors say after extensive studies, the repression of hostile feelings leads to further anxiety. Bitch. Your forehead with some crazy glue and better than 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 oh then we can be friends no sooner oh then we can be friends i really mean it uh, oh then we can be friends les do you know who uh coming on next. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine, man. Yeah, I know who he is. You know, we went to a party together, man. We went to this party, and we saw a dude. He drank $15 of wine, and he never staggered. You went to a party with this gentleman, and you saw somebody drink 15 bottles of wine. They never staggered? That's right. They just laid there. <laughs> Would you mind? Here he is, John Fox. Okay. Thank you very much. Oh, it's nice to be here in beautiful Sacramento. I, I'm from Los Angeles. A lot different in Los Angeles than it is here. In Sacramento, you turn on the radio, you get news, weather, and sports. 
Los Angeles, where I live, you get news, weather, sports, the thing they call the surf report. <laughs> so you've been in L.A., you've heard this thing, it's delivered by these kids with an IQ level about a grade lower than bean dip. <laughs> these kids are like, this is Scott in Santa Monica. <laughs> Party! <laughs> the waves are three to four feet, and they're really radical. So come on down and catch some rays. How are things in Newport? This is Gookie in Newport. <laughs> Party! The waves are three to four feet and they're almost primo bitchin'. <laughs> so come on down and catch some rays. How are things in San Francisco? <laughs> This is Charles from San Francisco. <laughs> oh, the waves are so gnarly. When it gets this rough, my nipples get real sore. And my balls get real swollen. It just oh, scares me. So why don't you just come on down and catch some rays? <laughs> or it's some Bills or some Rogers. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you guys cheer up, huh? <laughs> I live in Los Angeles next to a place called Fredericks of Hollywood. What a perfect name for a negligee store, don't you think? <laughs> Fredericks of Hollywood. <laughs> Wouldn't be very successful if it was like Fredericks of Bakersfield. <laughs> Pull up, to be a bunch of tractors parked out front. <laughs> Inside, you got a bunch of horny, sweaty farmers. <laughs> uh, you got something in a crotchless overall. <laughs> what about those edible undies that taste like biscuits and gravy? That Copenhagen flavor don't taste bad, Earl. <laughs> Please tip your waitresses. They got it. They make. They. It's a rough job. They got to remember a lot of drinks. It's not like a Western movie. Western movie. A guy walks into a bar. He has two choices: whiskey or beer. <laughs> Ever heard John Wayne walk into a bar like, "Well, can you make a pink squirrel?" <laughs> How about a couple orgasms for the guys? <laughs> I like Western movies. They're my favorite. You know, every Western movie you've ever seen, a lady has a baby on the prairie. And there's always one cowboy knows what to do. He's like, all right, we need some soap, some rags, and some hot water. She gonna have the baby here? <laughs> no, we're gonna wash the truck and take her to town. I salute you women for having babies, because let's face it, if men had babies, there wouldn't be any. <laughs> and guys have to have that thing once a month, that'd be a drag, huh, fellas? <laughs> Imagine carrying a tampon in your wallet. <laughs> Kotex wouldn't fit, would it? Be like, either he's having his period, or he's one rich son of a bitch, I bet. Make it hell on pickpockets, wouldn't it? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Guys have to call in sick for work. That'd be something on it. <laughs> hey, Vern. I'm not going to be able to haul that lumber for you today. I'm flowing. I'm on the hot water bottle right now. Marge, would you just leave me alone? God. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Well, 
Lester, do you know anything about magic? Yeah, I read the book three times, man. No, I mean, no, I mean, really, really magic. I saw the, I saw the movie four times. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, a lot of people, they don't want to talk to me. When I talk to people in the audience, man, they always look down. They don't want to look at me, man. They close their eyes and all that kind of stuff. Some people close their eyes, you know, and they figure I can't see them. Not good to figure that kind of logic out. They go, oh, please, don't let him talk to me. I saw that movie, Magic. I can't handle it. <laughs> well, to make a long story, I'm saying that to say this. Make a long story short, we are going to introduce a very talented gentleman, right? Like, oh, I know him, man. Would you do, would you do the honors? I'd be glad to. Ladies and gentlemen, Magic of the... Martin Lewis! Martin Lewis! I've pretty much searched all over the world to try and find a magic trick that I could present to American audiences that would be something different, something unique. And I think I've found it in the form of a magic trick from the second century of Japan's history. It's called Tamasudare, or the magic mat. And it's a bamboo mat that is twisted and folded to form figures. These figures illustrate a story. Now, the story doesn't translate well into English, but I think you'll find the figures speak a universal language. I do hope you enjoy this presentation of Tamasudare. Now, the mat itself is manufactured from 56 sticks, each one held together by an individual thread. And the story of Tamasudare goes like this. You see, it seems that there was a fellow who was fishing one day in his boat when he happened to pass beneath a bridge. <laughs> well, he looked up, and standing on the bridge, he saw an elderly fellow with a fishing pole. He uh, stopped his boat and moored it and was invited by this fellow to his home for tea. The home was of the traditional tatami style, and in our story, was shown to look like this. Well, from the home, they went for a walk in the gardens of a Shinto temple. The gates of the temple stood tall as they entered. And as they talked, their conversation turned to that topic most familiar to fishermen. And that, of course, was the size of their catch. Our fellow claiming the fish he had caught that day must have been at least this big. <laughs> Their journey continued until, in a side street, they saw a sign for a wayside inn. They entered the inn and they talked. They talked all night until in the morning the sun came up and the rising sun was shown to look like this. At that time, Japan was a nation divided. There were those that fought beneath the flag of the white dragon and those beneath the flag of the red dragon. But in the end of our story, all was united in peace and harmony beneath the weeping willow tree. And the weeping willow tree was shown to look like this. Ladies and gentlemen, Martin Lewis. Thank you. You know what, Les, um, do you like comedy teams? Hey, I'm a comedy team, man, you know what I mean? Well, you know this next act that's coming out now. One is, uh, one can see and one is, you know, unsighted. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, one is sighted. You know what that means? Yeah, he can see. The other one's, you know, unsighted. I know what that means, man. In other words, he's like us. No, no, no. But anyway, to make a long story short, would you do the honors? I'd be glad to, man. Go right ahead. I know him. Go right ahead. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, O'Dragon and Valdez. Thank you. Thank you, Les. Glad to be here, gang. We are O'Brien and Valdez. Good to be in Sacramento, huh? I'd like to introduce my partner to you. This here's my partner, Jim O'Brien. He's the sighted guy. It's Alex Valdez. He happens to be blind. Hey, but it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I have no car payments. Thank you very much. We are very happy to be here on the show tonight. I'm feeling especially proud wearing my brand new tuxedo. My partner Jim bought me. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate that. You're looking good, Fred Astaire. Yeah, I took two paychecks, and all I right, think it's right, worth right, it. Right, I do. Right, Thank right. you, man. Anything things are going real good for us right now. We're on our world tour. After this, we're heading to uh, Elk Grove. Elk Grove, right? <laughs> good. 
Somebody got to do it. It's our turn. Yeah. All right, I'll loosen up. Let's tell them a little bit about ourselves. Tell them a little background on us. Sounds good. All sounds right. good. Don't lie. I ain't gonna lie no more. It's TV. All right, Jim. If you lie tonight, you're gonna hear that buzzer. You got my word. Let's shake on it. All right, we'll shake. You don't trust me. Not bad for a blind dude, huh? <laughs> Not too bad for a white boy either, huh? <laughs> anyway, my glory days was high school. I was the uh, quarterback of the football team. They loved all the cheerleaders. <laughs> and... <laughs> I had a couple cheerleaders. <laughs> and... Touched a fat girl in biology. I wasn't into sports. So... About your high school? Well, high school's a little different for me in respect. I happen to go to an all-disabled high school. What's the name? Handicap High. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have? Two able parking spots out in front? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we parked in them anyway. We didn't care. <laughs> And then we get out try to walk normal. All right, all right. I'll tell you the truth, though. Lunchtime was the best time, man. Spilling stuff? No, no. no. See, me and some of my blind buddies, we get together, toss some of the seeing-eyed dogs up to the wheelchairs, have chariot <laughs> races down the hall. All right. Speaking of racing, I'm taking up jogging now. Quit smoking. I'm going to start running every day. You're going to run. Every morning at a crack of noon. I'm gone. <laughs> In fact, you ought to start running, too. Uh -uh. No huh? way, Jim. I don't know about jogging with a cane, buddy. Hey, you're my partner. You don't jog with no stinking cane. Get you a damn weed eater. <laughs> Gotta watch that stomach, buddy. Hey, hey, Kinda man. feel like my girlfriend's butt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Hey, it kinda does. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea, man. Leave it alone. <laughs> Alex Valdez. Jim O'Brien. Thanks, gang. Leave it alone. You know, it's really hard to make the last night of comedy and all that kind of stuff. You know that, don't you? Yeah, but you know, it's like uh, you like being in this business, right? Yeah, and that show, you know, show business is all they did in the sawdust. I love that kind of stuff. Where, where were you born? I was born in the woods and worked my way out. <laughs> Would you do me a favor since you're very versatile and talented? Yeah. Would you introduce this next gentleman? I'd be glad you, Len. Go right ahead. Look right over there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Bob Worley. <laughs> Oh, hey, look at your... Hey, nice, huh? Uh, hey, what I can do ventriloquism. Watch this. Okay, Mr. Rex, say out of the people. Hey, how you folks doing? It's great to be here. It's just, uh, isn't that amazing? It doesn't even move anything, you know? <laughs> you know what you guys ought to do? You ought to get one of these and carry it around in your car. No, just put it in the glove compartment up on the gun rack or something. Cause these are great. Like, like, <laughs> I'm serious. Like, say you're driving around town, you're right, and some jerk cuts off in traffic. You want to honk or scream at him? Don't. Just do what I do. Just pull it next to him. Roll down your window and do one of these. Hey, you stupid jerk! You're not gonna me. Yeah, I'm talking about fight. What? Pull over. Good. Pull over. Whatever. Sit down. You aren't there. Sit down. I'll talk to you later. I'm sorry. Roll it up and drive away, man. <laughs> it's great. Oh, jeez. And if the guy comes up to your window and you know, wants to beat you up or something, just go, I didn't say anything. He did. Go ahead, beat him up. I don't care. <laughs> Some big burly guy, why I ought to tear you up. <laughs> or, or if, let's say, like, later on you leave here, you had a few beers, right? You're driving okay, but you get pulled over. You, everybody knows how you feel when you get pulled over. It's like, you know, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Don't panic. Just do what I do. Just pull over, get in the passenger seat, put him in the driver's seat, you know what Uh, how you doing, officer? <laughs> oh, no, sir, I'm not driving. I'm too drunk, so my friend here is taking me home. <laughs> All right, buddy, out of the car. Look, you can't even stand up, you know. Touch <laughs> your wings to your bill, you know. <laughs> They're taking him downtown. You have the right to me, sign on anything, say you can be able to get to the <laughs> Get in that patrol car. Watch your head. <laughs> Here's something else you can use. Now, this is, I bet you everybody here in this room can use. 
Have you ever had friends over at your house that you can't get rid of? To be honest, guys. You know, it's like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. You gotta go to work the next day. They're all, let's get some more beers, buddy. Yeah, dude. It's like, get the heck out of here. Now this works every time, and it's not even rude. Don't even say a word next time. Just walk into the next room and come out and do this. Your turn. You guys have been very good. Thank you very much. Good night. I gotta ask you, Les, have you ever run for political office? Nope. You ever run for anything? Yeah, the bus. <laughs> well, you know, like uh, this gentleman's coming up now, he ran in 1968, he ran in 1972. For the bus? No, no, no. <laughs> See, what's happening now, he's kicking off his 1988 campaign. The almost president of the United States. Oh, I know who he is, man. The Honorable Pat Paulson. <laughs> The time has come for us to sit down and reason together. Too often serious world problems are discussed in an environment full of passion and unreasoning anger. But the day when a fiery orator could influence an audience with vehement tirades is long since past in this age of sophisticated political awareness. Let us then communicate with each other on a civilized level. Even President Reagan disdains the impassioned appeal to the emotional sensibilities of his cattle. Yeah, people. <laughs> Not for me the rabble Roger scorching indictment. It is true that some leaders have made progress with recalcitrant people through the use of demagogic emotional displays. That is to be expected when dealing with a great bulk of the lower and middle class peasants who are easily swayed by pyrotechnic performances. <laughs> if I were your president, I would lead this nation forward to a position of preeminence throughout the world. I believe it's our manifest destiny to dominate the oceans of the world and to bring the white man's burden to the underprivileged nations of the earth, for they are better accustomed to carrying such loads than we are. <laughs> and further, I say the dominance of this country in rural trade and military power shall be enhanced and enlarged to the point where entire nations will bow down and grovel in the dust at our feet. Hold it here, I got the wrong speed. Wait, wait. Wait, here's the right one. <clears throat> I'm very excited to be in Sacramento. <laughs> Gateway to enchanting Lodi. No, I know you're all saying, where has Pat Paulson been? The rest of you are saying, who the hell is Pat Paulson? <laughs> 1972, I lost the presidential election to Richard Nixon. That's when you people thought that he would make a better president than me. <laughs> CETA program here. Uh, Hey, you guys can leave. They look pretty good. Just go check the car. I saw somebody threw on the car. <laughs> Assholes. <laughs> uh, I have prepared a short speech for you here in the Sacramento area entitled, How to Survive the Next Four Years. A two-year plan. Now, where did our problems start? They started in the 70s with Nixon. I called the former president when he was in the White House. Well, I didn't call him, actually. What I did, I rented room at the Watergate and spoke into the urinal. <laughs> now, I will be running myself again. People have asked me, you're going to run? They keep bothering me. I'm going to do it. I'm going into Iowa, test the waters, do the Iowa caucus. I probably caucus all over Iowa. I don't know about <laughs> Probably a couple of times in Des Moines at the Caldean, Inn, I suspect. Uh, I don't caucus in California because it's not a good idea to caucus where you live, you know, it's a... 
I used to caucus three or four times a day, but I've, I've gotten older now. About once a month, all I can do. Uh, I would imagine that the Reverend Jackson has a larger caucus than me, probably. I don't know. Stereotype. Somebody asked me what I'm going to run as. Well, last time I ran as a Republican, this time I'll run as a Democrat. Now, what's the difference between these two uh, organizations? Well, I'll tell you what I think it is. A Democrat will meet a lady, he'll take her to dinner, take her to a movie, and he'll take her to bed. A Republican meets a lady, he takes her to dinner, takes her to a movie, and his chauffeur takes her to bed. <laughs> well, the average Democrat belongs to the Lions Club, and the average Republican belongs to the Country Club. There's a connection between these organizations. The drainage system from the country club is the water supply for the Lions Club. <laughs> now, you can give a cow to a Democrat, he'll milk that cow, keep some for himself, give the rest to poor people. You give that same cow to a Republican, he'll hire a Democrat to milk it at less than living wage, then he'll suggest there's a milk shortage and sell it at inflated prices. <laughs> This enables him to buy a bull. <laughs> With this bull, he makes a lot more cows, which he hires a lot more Democrats to milk for less than living wage. So you can see that the uh, Republican does to the Democrat what the bull did to the cow. So I'd like to close this, uh, my segment of this show with this thought. I know in my heart, ladies and gentlemen, that for centuries to come, years will pass. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I'd like to close with this thought. I know in my, well, I said that, redundant, redundant. I feel privileged to live in a land where even our national product is gross. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'd like to close with the thoughts of uh, former Attorney General John Mitchell, who said, when things get tough, the tough get things. <laughs> well, I'll close with my philosophy of life, and it goes like this. Well, the wind blew and the shit flew, and you're only here for a day or two. Hey, having fun yet? Hey, let's go. Hey, 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 that made me feel good, man. I made my teeth right. Go now, you know, you like movies and things like that. Yeah. Some people can be very, very versatile and all that, right? Yeah, you can see it, too. Of course. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, who do you think is a dummy? Now, hold it. Now, come here. Here we go. Now, people are versatile, right? Right. Now, this next gentleman is coming up. You know, he's an actor. He is. And he's a comedic person also. But you know, you've, heard of, you've heard of Blue Thunder, right? Yeah, that show? Yeah, he co-starred on that show. And he does comedy also. Well, let's get him out here. Ladies and gentlemen, Dana Carvey. Hot damn! I love you all very much. You know that, don't you? Deep down, I really love you a lot. I wouldn't lie, for real. Uh, for real. <laughs> um, no, we were communicating. You're very special. We have very special people in Sacramento. Street people live, in, live, live around here. This guy walked up to me today downtown. He says, hey, you could be them, because I said before when they were... Thanks for sharing. You're very special. Thank you. So anyway, uh, I'm uh, from San Francisco. I'm not gay. I'm just happy. Thank you very much. Hey, I'm not a homo. Back off, man. <laughs> Prove I'm not a homosexual? I didn't think this would happen tonight. <laughs> I'm gonna call my mom. Yeah, the taping went real well. Well, this woman demanded me proving I wasn't homosexual. Yes, it's a very special show. We enjoyed it. <laughs> I just wanted to have a nice show. Now suddenly I have to have live sex on stage. Yeah, it was real good. We went to the taping. The last guy had sex with this blonde woman on stage. That was the best part of the show. No, actually, I have a wife. Shh. Come on, I don't want to use a heckler line, and you know all those cliches. I don't come to Jack in the Box and bother you when you're working. I didn't want to, I didn't want to use it. I didn't, want, I didn't want to use it. You made me. Okay. But I finally did get a wife. I finally grew up and I have a wife now. I met my wife when she was 18. I raised her as one of my own. 
No, have you ever gone out with someone a lot younger than you and you have to explain recent history to them? Isn't it embarrassing? Honey, they were called the Beatles. There were four of them. <laughs> they were really good. What, what do you mean, yeah? You don't like the Beatles? What? This is weird. Yeah, they suck, man. You only had like one good song. You don't like the Beatles? You've got to like the Beatles. They're the greatest. You've got to like a Liverpool accent because everything's a question. How are you? I don't know. I'm a Liverpoolian. Everything's a voting question, you know. Thanks for bringing that up. That was very special. It's been a tight, nice little set, hasn't it? Okay. What time am I now? <laughs> you know you're not doing too well when the guy says, we don't really care in the booth, man. Just, I'm fine. <laughs> you're, all, you're already in Edit City, dude. <laughs> Let it happen, man. <laughs> We're gonna... <laughs> I'll be on TV. So, good evening. I had a wife, Paul McCartney. <laughs> it was rough, ladies and gentlemen. I tell you, it was rough. <laughs> God, I remember when I was a kid, um, my parents used to have parties. They used to scare the hell out of me. You know, didn't they, when you were a kid, because you didn't know why the adults were acting so weird. You didn't know what alcohol was. You know, you're put to bed early. Me and my brother Scott, we're in our room. It's like 6.30 in the evening. We're wide awake. And we're in our Roy Rogers pajamas. <laughs> listening to this weird adult party. My brother says, God, they're acting real weird, Dana. And I says, do you think they'll ever be normal again? <laughs> you know, and I run out there and I see my mom lifting her dress up. Party! I run back in, they're acting real strange, Scott. I run out again, you know, my mom's been drinking, her voice is different, I didn't know what it meant. She walks up to me and her voice is slurred, she goes, go back to bed, honey. I mean, I thought it was a game, I said, okay, Bob. I run back in, I sound like Dudley Moore. It's so weird out there, I don't believe it. It's weird, and we run back out, my Uncle Rock grabs us, sticks us on a dance rumba train with all these drunken adults at 3 a.m. Roy Rogers pajamas. <laughs> My brother says, I hope I never grow up, man. <laughs> I said, isn't fun the best thing ever? <laughs> All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is uh, my final piece. I really want this to go over. Oh, they're in the booth now. Oh, the, really? Oh, screw it, man. This guy's good. Get the scissors out now, man. <laughs> no, bring a big butcher knife. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, my favorite show as a kid was Jacques Cousteau because of all those fabulous sea creatures. I used to love that show. Remember that? Wasn't that great? All those fabulous sea creatures floating in the sea. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jacques Cousteau. Myself and the crew of the Calypso are watching the flying napkin fish wave in the sea. <laughs> this is the male napkin fish. Hot and horny he waves. <laughs> Over here, you guessed it, <laughs> the female napkin fish. She's one hot bitch of a fish. She's some kind of fabulous sea slut, that's for sure. <laughs> she knows what she wants and she knows how to get it. Her buttocks are tingling. <laughs> She's searching for a rumbo man. A rumbo fish. <laughs> She's waiting amongst the coral reef because all the bars are closed. <laughs> In comes the male napkin fish. The waters are treacherous and there are sharp coral, but he swims quickly because he really wants to get laid. <laughs> Suddenly, he scrapes some curl and a penis, a big one, <laughs> falls off. <laughs> no problem, he has seven. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> she said, whoa, whoa, whoa. 
That's right, he has seven. Now an even half dozen. <laughs> These folks over here, it's like a documentary. What's going to happen next? She's waiting down here. Hurry up. <laughs> he swims faster. Suddenly, another penis falls out. For absolutely no reason whatsoever. Sometimes, life's a beach. Now, with an even quintet of penis. <laughs> That's right, quintet of penis. He swims faster. She's down here waiting. He begins to circle around her. This is the final mating ritual. This motion like this is as if to say to his prospective mate, as if to say, I have cocaine come to my house. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys have been just fabulous. Thank you. You know, you all have been phenomenal this evening. You know, on behalf of all the folks this evening who are on the show this evening. Right. We thank you all for uh, coming out and tuning in and all that stuff, right? Like, we had a ball, right? Yeah, sure did, man. So, what we'd like to do is like, uh, would you mind, Les, you have something to say to the folks? Yeah. Folks, y'all have been great. Good night. Have a good time. Right. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. Yeah.